Don't worry. Oh, sh I'm not going to hurt you. Uh. He's, he's generally a good boy. Welcome to episode 69. We can't help ourselves. We're fine. But my first real 16. Bought it in the five and time. Played it till my fingers bleed. Was the summer of 69. He already sounded like he was 16. It's, it's an erotic city. Ironically, he's 69. <laughs> um, what must his 69th birthday have been like? <laughs> Lots of old lady sex. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of Betty White's curtsying on his face. <laughs> Gross. Stop! Oh, okay. it's over. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's hilarious. I think, J I think Ziggy did that one. Oh, Ziggy. That was the first one. He pulled the thing out. I can't... Oh, uh, you're adorable and klutzy. I don't know how he's never done that before. Because... Monkey boy. It's the dragon. Ooh, I should have been careful. I could have gotten electrocuted. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Be careful. Right. You could get a Prince, offended. all of my purple life. Mm. Um, Puss control! So episode 69, the most sexual of all episodes, besides maybe 169. <laughs> Someday oh. we'll get there. <laughs> um, you know, or a 71. Which is just a 69 with two more fingers. And there, and there was only two options. <laughs> and we lost our listener. Brian <laughs> Adams, a prince. <laughs> uh, but the choice Come on, clean. Nancy, hang with us. <laughs> Nancy, don't go away. <laughs> in, in between prince, it was either love, sexy, or 1999. It's not my fault. And nobody here I was likes. born this way. Uh, the vape is back. <laughs> <laughs> Double vape. Oh, yeah, you got all the vape. Oh, God, it's so there. good. I'm just glad he doesn't ring the Glade bell. <laughs> the Glade holds that off a little bit. Because <laughs> that shit makes me sneeze. <laughs> this is our third Prince foray. I don't even know what foray means. Our first, whatever, our third Prince. Or our second and a half. We're going fox hunting for a Prince. Our, our second and a half, because we only did half of Parade. The Batman album. So we're sticking Didn't with. Didn't we try to do Cherry Moon? That's this is that's what it's, it's. I don't know what the actual title is. It's Parade Under the Cherry Moon. Like the uh, mo the movie is Under the Cherry Moon. The album is called Parade. Okay. What? Are you shitting me? Wow. Well, because because of the song Christopher Tracy's Parade. God damn, well, that movie was very awful. Very confusing. Yeah, we can talk. You about made us that. watch the movie, by the way. The movie <laughs> was. Well, it was it was fantastic. Tell us, Mr. Booby Pants, what happened? <laughs> Woo wee! Woo wee! <laughs> it was my second time viewing it, and all I learned was that uh, Prince has no screen presence at all. No, it was a real stink. If you like him, it's like, oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> he was yes. very, very, was very it thin. Though? Was he, it even? He uh, is able to run. In some four inch heels like no woman I've ever seen. Morris Day mm -hmm. so, more the Morris Day sidekick cool. guy really should have been the main character. He was like far more compelling. He was way, way, way too sexual with his cousin. He was really good at picking out actors for the rest of the movie, but very jealous of the their ability to act. <laughs> I think the problem with it is like That seemed like he just like somebody would like start acting really well and he'd just go you're out. Shit on your scene. Your part is gone. <laughs> yeah, I think the problem is like how stupidly family friendly it is for. I don't know. It's Prince. He sings about incest. So like, why is this movie so boringly PG? Why isn't he? And yet he's like a naked fruit fruit. in a tub with his with his adult cousin for like Whatever. twenty minutes. So it's a sucky movie, that's all there is to say. It's worth watching once, I think. It was truly fascinating. Um, another Prince News, Sirius He's XM dead. channel exists again. I don't know. Oh. 
or for the first time. I don't. Well, I thought you were going to tell everybody he was dead. <sighs> he died. He died again. But yeah, the revolution has like this little nightly thing where they get I don't revolutionized. Know, I don't know, the band gets on there and gushes about Prince and their experiences and plays like a little playlist of their favorite songs and <laughs> um, And I watched... <laughs> Was that the start of a Prince song? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Computer Blue. Soundboard of all of Prince's sound effects. Uh, so uh, the other night when I, I texted you about it, the uh, oh, I didn't get a chance to watch it, and they the, took it away. Took it away already. Roxy said that they were. It was the last night to see it. Oh, okay. Well, dog. Right, He's gonna me. be asleep really soon. The Prince Channel put out this Purple Rain era concert, so 85. Right, yeah. 85. Mm-hmm. I had never seen anything from the Purple Rain tour. Like, mostly all I ever watch is, like, the early stuff. Like, you know, controversy tour stuff and, like, 1999 and controversy era. It was just so weird because, like, they're just so clearly playing to the audience and the Purple Rain thing. And there's so much downtime to the point where I was like, are you going to play more than two songs in a row (laughs) at any point? Because it's just long stretches of just Prince kind of just like he was sitting, talking to the audience was he not like like doing these little vignettes like like I don't know do you want me to take you home am I sexy enough like I don't know that kind of stuff but then like the ending is so good I was like oh I'm never gonna question him again like it's some this amazing like five song stretch at the end ending in like a 15 minute version of Purple Rain there's like a gajillion people on the stage where I'm like, nope, he knows what yeah. he's doing. All the boredom was worth it. Yeah, it's just so, it's just really weird in contrast to like earlier tours where it's so sharply choreographed and like just boom, 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 boom. There's right. no I, downtime at all. I think we've talked about before how he was really good about his presence. It's like whether you liked his music or not, his presence in anything. Like I remember that show That Girl. And he, he was on there for two episodes or something, and I was just like, you know, he is completely in control of his presence on this stupid little sitcom that yeah. he decided to show up on. And it was just, wow, he really knows what he looks like. He really knows where, you know, it's like, no, 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 you feel me from over here. It just doesn't translate, <laughs> to, it just doesn't translate to a movie. Except the costuming was really fantastic. Sure. I mean... God, everything he wore, it wasn't even in color, and everything he wore was eh. awesome. Yeah, so that's all I'll say about the, at least, I, whatever, the one Purple Rain era concert, is it was, v- it, it felt like a victory lap more than a concert. Is what That's what a lot like. of them did back then, though. I can't really fault you for that, right? But <laughs> everybody, like, when you have yeah. one good album, you do it for three years you yeah. just roll around the earth yeah three really times vic- victory lap tour because <laughs> like can i give you an instance in 1980 what seven or whatever uh uh that def leopard album came out remember that hysteria or whatever it's called yeah and I was just going to use this as an dread. example where they just toured forever on that one f***ing album <laughs> and it's just like hey there's another hit and another hit just keep touring <laughs> everybody wants to hear everything you play <laughs> well I mean you know as long as it was on the radio go ahead yeah, like I said, still like a comparable thing would be the the police's synchronicity tour. Like, there's just a vibe to it where it's like it goes from working band to book signing, basically. <laughs> <laughs> all right, 1999. Uh, this is my second, probably my second. All right, I'm rank. What my top three Prince albums would be? This is gonna be like Sign of the Times, 1999, Ugh, and Dirty Mind. I think. I think that's just. Really quickly picking. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I uh, I always forget the name of the album. 
What's the one with seven on it? That's Sign of the Times. Okay. I had that one, and I listened to it nonstop for like, I don't know, a hundred months. Is Sign of the Times only a like... A hundred months? Yeah. I listened to it nonstop for Sign. a really long time. And that <laughs> boyfriend's truck, it was in there all the time, and it was always in my mom's car. Yeah, Sign of the Times is more recent for me. I, did that, I don't think that hit my top five until like a couple of years ago. And I really started to love it. 1999 for me was the first Prince thing I ever really heard. Or that I noticed. I think Dirty Mind, like he was on like videos. He had videos for that. Mm-hmm. So I, I had a vague inkling of who he was. But that little red Corvette, man, that was the song that I was just like... What is this about? <laughs> yeah, I know what he existed before that, but I think this is the first album that I became aware of him too. I think this is at least a, is. I mean, they're so different, but it, like, I think it's it's as good of an album as uh, it's at least really close to Purple Rain. But mm-hmm. they're, like, they're too different. This one's more all like really all. You know, some like some of the people in the Revolution did some smatterings of stuff here, but like this one's. So much just him. Where purple, purple, purple Rain feels more like an ensemble album. Anyway, we have to get to the super long ass album. We're already fifteen minutes in. All right. But we love. Prince Here's my so favorite much. song that Phil Collins ripped off. Oh boy. Man, that that blew my mind. It's weird that something can be like that obvious, and but you never notice it until someone points it out. This is just Susudio. I mean, Susudio is just this. Don't worry. Oh, sh- I'm not going to hurt you. Eh. Su- <laughs> yeah, like, outside of the Batman soundtrack, this might be the first Prince song I ever remember, be- I mean, just being conscious of. Oh, this can't be loud enough. <laughs> I was dreaming when I wrote this song. Meow, 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 meow. Chris Some, will have no comments for like the rest of this song. <laughs> woke up this morning, could have sworn it was Judgment Day. I gotta do my white man overbite. So purple, there were people running everywhere. This is gonna be a sing-along <laughs> episode. But, oh, it, but something I didn't know until last week was that Wendy, Wendy Mc, Mel, Melvoin didn't join the band until... After Purple Rain. I thought she no, was... No, that can't be right. She, she's on the, the controversy, isn't she? No. Had, she didn't join the band. She might have... I read something somewhere. But she wasn't know, in the revolution. Liner notes of something. She didn't play with them live until after Purple Rain. They talked about how he sort of forced her in... Like, that was sort of his proving ground song. He, like, made her do this song where she had to talk about head all the time and, like... Oh, that Lisa, like, Lisa, oh, is that Lisa? Li- Lisa was in the band for a long time. Okay. But I always so thought, I always thought Wendy and that. Lisa were always in the revolution, but Ooh. Wendy was a later addition. So it's Lisa. But, Le- yeah, Lisa Coleman was always playing synthesizer, or at least for quite a while. Oh, okay. And she was, like, I don't know if she was in a relationship with Wendy or what, but, like, that's how Prince met her. Okay. She eventually took over for, took over rhythm guitar. She looked fantastic on that trivia. That was Wendy, right? On what? Uh, a couple weeks ago, there was a Grammys tribute. Oh, finally. I didn't see it. I mostly knew about it because Dave Grohl was on it. But Wendy was in it. Well, she was in the band on stage the whole night, and they had different people mm-hmm. coming up and doing songs. And it was cool. Wendy looked great. Hold on, name yeah. name that lyric. He says, "Something's got a bomb. We'll all die here today." I have Everybody's no got a bomb. We oh. could all die any day. I've, oh, thanks. you did. You are in the wrong house now, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I've never had. <laughs> I can never answer those questions. I'm so happy right now. He never had any idea what he was saying. You just walked the. Into the wrong house. <laughs> you know who knows We're all gonna... that? Woo! Yeah. We're going to break that down for nine minutes. Because I think this was the first 
Like, this is a huge breakthrough album, I think, at least artistically for Prince. And I think the difference is, like, the earlier albums, as much as I love Dirty Mind and parts of Controversy, you still had this fairly limited Minneapolis funk sound. It was, you know, more like the quick-driving, synth-driven funk. And there wasn't a lot of, like, textual variation. There wasn't a lot of difference from song to song. I mean, at least the production value. And I think in this, it's like, really, like, open the floodgates to just song arrangement. I always thought of it as, once I learned anything about how music gets produced, I I took uh, radio classes and stuff, and it's like, radio can only give you so much range, and this is a good song as an example of, hey, this sounds good on the radio no matter how far you are away from the station. Like, Uh. every, every knowable part of it is easily translatable with half the signal. (laughs) <laughs> it's like you don't need the nuances to get what this song is you you know what it is right you know what i mean yeah that's an interesting thing of like if a song's really quiet can you still get like if you hear something in the distance you're like is this peaking my interest like oh mm-hmm. so i love hearing new songs like the digital versions of them from off, off the master so tracks and stuff it's Freaking awesome. Because, like, this song, I listen to it now, and there's so much more sound in there than I ever thought. That's like Michael, uh, George Michael. When you're talking about him, it's like, you know, it's like, there's so much more going on. Oh, like, there's more instruments, there's more everything than I ever would have thought. No more. No okay, more, we're back. Can't see your ears no more. Can't see your ears no more. No more. Can't see your ears. We're back, and Princess still uh, got Little Red Corvette. Uh, He's talking about a vagina. If this isn't the greatest song to be reviewed on our 69th episode, oh, I glad, just don't know what I'm it is. glad there's an explicit E next to this song. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Goodness, it doesn't swear. Sideways, the wind lies. She had a pocket full of used condoms. That's gross. <laughs> That's the kind of woman you want. I don't know. Sometimes I get like questionable life choices from Prince songs. Like, was this song about a crack whore? Or, Come here, honey. I'm going to. She's like rifling through her pockets and like just like a bunch of used condoms. Like, he has one. Oh, God. He's like, let's do it. Uh, Like, another one is, I'm, uh, I can't prove my theory, but I'm pretty sure uh, Raspberry Beret, I'm pretty sure Mr. McGee was the Raspberry Beret. Mm -hmm. That he, he just, he went out the back and then came in the front, just dressed, (laughs) and he put on a Raspberry Beret, and Prince is like, "Uh, mm." That is Uh, really weird and creepy. Prince is Oh, I got it. He pulled it out like a spaghetti noodle. Yeah, hi. Oh, the end of the song has my favorite Prince falsetto oh, wail. Yeah. <laughs> is, oh, yeah. Is this the album version of this very long? How long is this? 12 minutes. Five minutes. Here's the most confusing lyric in history. Something about PB and J. Move over, baby. Give me the key. Listen, I'm trying to be a little red love machine. Little red love that sounds like it has something to do with the clitoris, doesn't it? <laughs> he, said, he says, "Sir, bad like me, living the P and J." Your little red Corvette. It's like, I mean, if it was my dog, I'd be going. That's totally about his penis, right? <laughs> But if it's a girl, Little Red Grand Corvette takes a whole nother... <laughs> Red Rocket! Red Rocket! If he uses it too much, it's going to look like a chewed up piece of gum. That's all I'm saying. Got to slow down. If you use it up, it'll look like a chewed up piece of gum. Piece of gum. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Is it right? 
Girls getting ass like I never. Oh, too early. But dream and the ride. <laughs> the ride is so smooth. Oh, you both yeah, fuck it up all over them. I don't feel bad about any of my screwed up lyrics now. <laughs> we never judge you, baby. I always hear it wrong. <laughs> this is, like, this is the jazz bear. part where, you know, you can just do whatever you want. He's basically scatting anyway. That's why, that's why I, I, he's in That's why I love that part of Manic Monday we got where to, he's clearly we got doing his freestyle thing and uh, mm -hmm. Joanna Hoff is just singing, singing it like the whitest possible straightforward way. You really missed a treat. She did that song too. I believe the original lyrics On were the Little Red Corvair and you gotta slow down or you'll roll over. And then their producers like... Because the, the Chevy the Corvair. Corvair. And yeah, they yeah. were like, oh no, nobody's bought one of those in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> you need to write a new song. Ralph Nader took those right off the road, man. <laughs> you need new lyrics. And he's like, well, what about Corvette? Ooh, Corvettes. People like Corvettes. People Get a like Corvette. so much. And that's why you don't put extra tequila in the margarita. Why? Because we get the truth? Yeah. <laughs> Our listener doesn't need the truth. Listeners, there's two. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, I like it, baby. Aww. I'm sorry. This is actually my favorite Prince song basically of all time. Prince you has... Get delirious? Pr this is you the get... best song to have in the shower. Do you get delirious <laughs> when you hear... Why you get ready for your Saturday night? Are you gonna lose control because you in, just can't see her? Put you in the right mood. Prince has two of the best. And I, I don't know what the term for it is. Like a, I guess just an homage. But delirious is like delirious is just an Elvis song, and uh, cream is just a T Rex song. So and, okay. they're, and they're both fucking awesome. He's gonna make a big old mess. Is what's gonna happen. With his wiener. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's pretty much explicitly saying so. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> I'm Mr. <laughs> Poopy <laughs> Pants. <laughs> I have brain damage. Okay, what's, what's the... No I'm sure there are other examples, but I always think of, like, uh, You've Got to Hide Your Love Away, or it's John Lennon just straight up doing Bob, <laughs> Bob Dylan. Like one f one artist dressing up like another, basically, and yeah. like borrowing someone else's shtick in order to make a great song. Yeah. Like when I would steal my grandpa's hat and and run around with the guitar, screaming, "I'm trying to cash!" <laughs> when I was a kid, and then everybody would laugh, and it was really great, and they would take pictures. But you know, if you look at it, I didn't look like Johnny Cash at all. <laughs> I don't know what my stupid young ass was thinking. I'm a Johnny Cash. Hey, I, I got this. Hey, 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 I'm Johnny Cash. I got near, 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 near. You've never been to prison. <laughs> I got disemboweled by an ostrich. Hey. So Chris tells me she wakes up about. in the middle of the night and I'm singing hurt. <laughs> You're not Johnny Cash. Now shut up. Go to bed. God, you're an idiot. So I think this is the definition of talent borrows, genius steals. I think there's the asterisk next to it, which is it has to work. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> you can rip someone off, but it has to have that weird intangible element of just being a great song. So that, like, the song has to be good enough to where people excuse the fact that it's just... Completely emulating someone else's thing. It's a ripoff of what blue straight shoes. Yeah, I don't know. the song has to be good enough where it doesn't matter. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I feel like hilarious. One hundred percent qualifies. Mm -hmm. Here's one of my top five favorite Prince songs. And we're back with the lyric that I'm always telling you about. You have a lot of songs in your top five. Mm. What's this one called? What am I? Let's pretend oh, we're married. Oh yes. The one with. The famous line at the end. And the famous scream. Oh, wait, is that computer blue? The one, the one where he just screams for like 10 seconds at the end of the song. Yeah. See, like, I love this this 
part of Prince's repertoire where he's doing, <laughs> he's using like, I think it's the Lin drum, I don't know, just whatever, the drum machine, oh God, really kind of flat. Of like, it's not funky at all. It's not really even new wave. It's just like this really is... flat beats with I like just a, got the news yeah. today. Just like really <laughs> driving. Yes, what? It's really happening. driving <laughs> flat beats. Ziggy's having a, like, doggy orgasm over this goddamn toy right now. Is Prince the Pointer Sisters with different wigs on? Did the Pointer Sisters <laughs> borrow from Prince? Did he give them I anything? If you're down for free for a couple of hours, if you ain't busy for the next seven years. I really want to watch an Eddie Murphy movie right now. Oh, no. oh, note Whoa. to self. Don't well, they have to redeem themselves from that third one. Don't point out terrible. favorite songs. <laughs> I edit the podcast so I know. Every time I mention a favorite song, it inevitably gets shat on. It's, it's totally the Neutron Dance, though. I'm I just mean, burning doing, doing the Neutron, neutron dance. dance. Yes. All right. I mean, it's not that I'm not Mid-episode enjoying it. Mid-episode pause. Holy mm. shit. <laughs> Look you know, at this is a dog. really long album, but okay. This dog is losing his shit right now. Look at this. He's on the table chewing on it. He's, he's like across the ottoman and the table. <laughs> oh, that hurt my ears. What was that, Adele? Phew. Oh. That burned my ears. This is the news round dance. Mm-hmm. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he gave it to them. Maybe they gave it to him. What was the <laughs> timeline? This what? was after, so go f*** yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> this was 83. 1999 was 82. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to do my Eddie Murphy. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm Gumby, damn it! <laughs> Back in the album. It. I'm sorry, they just made a more well, popular song. Oh, wait a All minute. Right. Do you know enough about music that the Pointer Sisters didn't rip them off? Whoever wrote the song ripped them off. <laughs> He's lost Oh, it. you're a big tough guy. What are you doing on my table? Being hey. king of the world is what he's doing. What are you doing on my table? Get down. Yeah, get down. Barely hanging on. Look at his paws. I wish the computer wasn't there so he could do like a modeling catwalk thing. He so would. What, what's the his, What's the seven year itch mean? I don't... Have you not seen that movie? No. <gasps> oh yeah, men are supposed to like oh. cheat on their wives after seven years. You don't even know that? That's crazy. Well now we have to go watch an old movie with Marilyn Monroe. But, but I like how he's he's using it like like here's an expiration date like, like <laughs> let's get married. Are you busy? For Holy shit! Years? You're twenty. What? <laughs> I gotta get the hell out of here. I think it's really funny that one of my favorite bands open for Prince all the time. The replacements open for Prince all the time, and they have nothing to do with funk, <laughs> and they're everything to do with. Here it comes. Brunchy rock. <laughs> I want it. I want it. I want it. Uh... Oh, he's so dirty. Can you relate? I sincerely want to f*** the what out of your mouth? The taste out of your mouth. I think he says, yes. I think he's, I think he says Marsha, too. He says Marsha. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marsha's totally a Minnesota white chick. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he says Marsha. I'll have to look that up. It's going to be something else. It's going to be... Apparently, I can't understand any Prince lyrics. She's only slightly overweight. She was on the... She was the team leader of her uh, volleyball team. Marsha. Marsha. If you like to fight, you're a double drag fool. You went to a new life. What about you? (laughs) Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm on board. If Prince wants to sit, if Prince Ooh, sincerely here's, uh, wants to f- the taste here, out of my mouth, here's DMSR. I say, come get it, buddy. Well, his corpse can, I guess. That would be disgusting. What if though? I mean, it's still Prince. Here's D- DMSR. I'll be right back. 
Yeah, this is the song for... Dance, uh, music, sex, romance. This is the song for... This is the disembodied head. Holy my crap. Dragon. My dog removes heads from everything. This sounds like the this sounds like the dance chain from uh 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 what was that Chicago thing Soul Train Yeah, th- this was I think this is the last time he really he did like to a T the Minneapolis funk sound yeah because he didn't do it on Purple Rain and definitely didn't do it on right 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 any of the like subsequent three albums so yeah. Yeah, this sounds like, to me, everything when I was a kid that came out of Chicago, which would have, by extension, be uh, uh, Minnesota. Yeah, Because the they just kept moving around in that same circuit, doing that whole, like, circle thing. Yeah, the lyric is, look here, Marsha, I'm not saying this just <laughs> to be nasty. I sincerely want to f*** the taste out of your mouth. Can you relate? I, I, I know it's because Prince is half black, but I'm, I'm still surprised there's he never does any of like the Minnesota oars on anything. Like, how come there's no Minnesota accent? Oh, he totally takes that out. The one thing that I understand Prince always had was creative control. Pussy control? Mm-hmm. Over his albums and shit. So he has he has somebody whose job is just to edit out the ols. My, <laughs> Where's my cookie? <laughs> but this this totally sounds like something that he considered giving to the time, and then was like, "Eh, I need one more song for this album. It's already right? too long." I would totally believe that if somebody told me that. So, let's be honest. Morris Day was just an extension of his own personality. Morris, but Morris no, Day. no, wait. That's you know. I have learned now. That I'm so old now that I have learned that there are performers and there are are artists and performers. There, there's a place for Morris Day and people who are just perform other people's things and interpret it. You're so cute today. What's the deal? What's your cookie? If there wasn't chocolate, <laughs> I'd give you some. Mm-hmm. All right. He's holding Breton's plate. I need to tell you about There's how much I love chocolate. <laughs> I don't eat too much, I swear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One of the greatest music videos of all time, where it's Prince and, like, Lisa and his girlfriend at the time, where Prince is just being spun around on this bed on stage. Mm-hmm. And it's like having pantomime sex. It's all very awkward and weird. I love this song. I'm not listening to all nine minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to listen to you pretend to have sex for nine minutes. Oh, shit. This song's kind of boring. We need to do something to make it more interesting. <laughs> Let's have a revolving bed. And we'll simulate having sex. You know what's better than simulated sex? What? Sex. <laughs> you knew it was coming and you still laughed. I'm 90% sure there's like sounds of bed, bed springs in this. Ooh, in this minute. song. I, you know, like the cliche love making bed sound. <laughs> he wants to be in, he wants to lay his head in your lap. You know, he's licking You don't have to lick. You know, you don't know. What are you yeah! doing? Stop. <laughs> Prince is making him horny. <laughs> don't lick Brett's crotch. That's weird. <laughs> I don't care if there are crumbs there. Leave it alone. <laughs> That's always my excuse. <laughs> there were crumbs there. <laughs> I smelled cookie. Why does the dog get to lick your crotch? <laughs> I just want to lick your cookie. Can I please just lick your cookie? <laughs> what the hell, man? I yeah. saw the crumbs first. He's looking at his heads down, he's just staring longingly. No, he's good now. Okay. I think this song was the first appearance of the Camille persona, the the high pitched voice. Ah. I didn't know it had a name. Well, Brett I think, has the I think super fa- double fans just book. call it Camille because the whole song Shockadelica is done in that voice. And it was from a concept album called Camille. Ah, okay. 
This is our first major skip in the podcast. Yeah, we'll get to oh, the, not really we'll get to the climax part. I'm really? going to have to torture you now. Pretty sure if Prince says he's going to torture you, it's not much torture. It's the kind you're going to like. Sick five and a half feet of torture. <laughs> and whipping your ass at basketball. Okay, it's, yeah, Le- <laughs> Le- it's L- Lisa. Oh, wait, the video is Lisa and Jill Jones. I don't know who's on the song Jill itself. Jill Jones? Jill Jones is like his girlfriend at the time. I don't know. Was she the ballerina type one that was I don't know. She was on some, that other album? Did she bathe in the waters of Lake Minnetonka? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not you go purify yourself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka? That's not Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> you know that's a <laughs> thing that... You son of a bitch! <laughs> you know that really happened. You just know that really Probably. happened. Because <laughs> Prince... He wasn't the guy that would let that go. That went right in a journal. Things to put in a movie script. <laughs> and then I told her, you should go pure <laughs> I have it right here. <laughs> things, that go in a, things that go in a movie script. And then she, and then she came. <laughs> and then she was. <laughs> oh, shit, somebody stole that one from me. <clears throat> I have to do something oh, else sweet now. Jesus, the song never ends. Here's something in the water... <laughs> Your something in the water does not compute. Is it the water? Or another is it one Lake of my fa- another one of my favorite Prince songs. Is the water of Lake Minnetonka? Oh, th- this is the one where at least this one's only four minutes, and this is one where he <laughs> he just at least the whole at least this is only four minutes. The whole end of the song is him. The whole end, ugh, end of the song is him just screaming. It's great. I thought that was okay. I'm in. Great legs. Ziggy, why like does he want to make spring. me big? Does not compute. Yeah, also has my other favorite lyric. Bitch, you think you're special? Well, so do I. I don't know what that means, but it's great. <laughs> I feel like I always know when Prince isn't all that confident about the lyrics in a song because I have trouble hearing them. When he knows it's good, he makes sure they're right up front. And I'm really, well, like, working to hear these. Well, I think especially on this album, there's a complex rhythm, I don't know, a complex groove to a lot of these, where it's just mostly getting intonation right. So it's not like, like in Purple Rain, everything's a fucking anthem. Yes. So yes. it's like, here's the lyric. Like in this, it's, it's more of trying to get just the, just trying to fill in the tempo. Since when did you get on my table? I think he just sat on my phone. Did you give him happy dog treat today? He's like super I precious. Think you're his happy dog treat. Can I get, mm-hmm. can I give you guys my funny th- thought about this song? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I keep you. waiting for the break where it goes, Earth below us, drifting, <laughs> falling, floating, <laughs> rain. Oh, oh, Can I make me I check the ear again? <laughs> uh, was that Major <laughs> Tom? Hello, Major Tom. <laughs> Hello, Major Tom. Major, Major Tom. I just Tom. keep waiting for the Major break. Major Tom, Tom. This never breaks. It's the same thing over and over again. Just it never breaks. With the intensity. Peter Schilling, Major Tom. Yeah. That's I'm guessing funny. that was like 86. It was like 81, probably. Oh, 82. Oh, <laughs> that's Same snap. year. Why don't... Yeah, just ask me. You don't need Google. I know what year everything happened in the 80s within one year. No, Wait, we gotta listen to the screaming. Nope, 83. Prince had it beat again. Sorry. Yes. See? I like how he's just pushing and pushing and pushing and he never lets up. I'm not taking anything away from him. I'm just saying, this sounds like... <laughs> yeah, I don't see, know what that see, says about me exactly, but... Yeah, I get it. I like it. I like that it's aspect not a, of it. Yeah, it's not overt funk and it's not melodic enough to be new wave. Yeah, it's not electronica. It's, it's just it's Prince funk. Like he invent this is his subgenre that he invented, and he didn't really do that much in it outside of this album, where it's just like strictly the drum machine and some synthesizers and him. Like I'm he, really gonna have to wash my phone after this. <laughs> All right, you can introduce the next song. I, this is the only song in here I don't care for. Free. It's free. <laughs> it's free. It's all free! Brett had to go downstairs and pee and get a corn of cob. This is one of, you know, corn... <laughs> my corn liquor. I don't know why it looks like a cob of corn. It's like, 
Well, people just keep saying Bush Light. Yeah, this is one of the rare... It's ra- like a cup of corn with alcohol in it. And this, this is one of the rare early makes- early Prince ballads. Yeah, he's more of a dance hall. Yeah, like, especially early on. I mean, he did a ton of this shit later, but... So this is called Free. Nothing makes me sound more white than saying dance hall. <laughs> dance all day, man. This sounds like a... Uh, Another Prince song to me. He only made 4,000 of them. Yeah, yeah. Definite prototype for uh, that song. I don't know what song that is, but... Do you want him? Beautiful ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a prototype for beautiful ones. Yeah, like they're not the mm-hmm. same, but I, I can hear it in there. It's, it's waiting to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Beautiful Ones is probably one of my favorite Prince songs of all time. It's yeah. Do you ever wonder like if you're listening to, to an artist afterwards, if you could ever like look at it and go, "Hey, I wonder if they got famous too fast and they never got to develop their songs, and so they go back and revisit things." Like, Tough time. Oh, I could do that again better. I wonder if they even think that, or if it's just like, "Oh, I'm going to do this song," and everybody standing around them in the studio goes. Yeah, you already did that song. I mean, I mean, you're doing it better, but it's one of the benefits you know. of not being famous is you can tweak to your heart's content and nobody notices. <laughs> 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 Laugh, <Last Yeah>. Bell. <laughs> that's that's what that is the freedom of not being so famous. Ani's done that several times. She'll she's rewritten lyrics occasionally and put them out on. Ani a- Bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But she'll she'll do them okay. live with, with slightly different lyrics, <laughs> and then every now and then there'll be an album that comes out, and she'll throw one of those on the end, or release it as part of a bootleg or some. Shit. Like I don't know how actual recording musicians do it, because it would drive me insane. Because I think there's a certain level of OCD that's always there of of like you make something, and how do you just let it go? Yeah, how do you like, stop? How something has an expiration date? Because like, eventually I, eventually I get okay with stuff that I do. I'm like, all right, like, I'm running out of things to fix and tweak. But when you have, like, a like a cutoff date, how are you okay with that? I would just never listen to it again. I'd be like, well, all right, I, I'm this is being taken out of my hands. Right. Like, I'm never listening to it again. You would have to just go, yeah. And, and I've listened to interviews of not just Ani, but other artists yeah. who go, I cannot listen to my old albums. I can't listen to my old yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of I just hear what's way. wrong with it. Yeah. Actors who can't watch their own work, they just see what's wrong with it and how they didn't quite get far enough mm-hmm. into the whatever. And Yeah, there's a lot of musicians I've like, heard it, seen in you know, interviews. If you've got a catalog <laughs> of 30 albums over the last 25 years, you know, there's a lot of stuff where you go, Jesus, I was so 19 when I wrote that. God. Yeah. I mean, if you ever look back at something you wrote when you were 19 years old that you thought was profound as hell and then you read yeah, it now and you're like <laughs> god you know you've got that if you've got that times you sold that song and sure. 150 thousand billion whatever people have listened to it and memorized it and have found some meaning in it and it's sacred to them but you're like i could do better i call it the sting factor where damn you it keep- you were <laughs> the same <laughs> frequency god I was just gonna go with Sting. <laughs> it's like he, he does that to the, the just... worst extent, where he is like, he's like, I hate, I hate that song I wrote. I'm gonna sort of play it for you, but I'm going to sing a different melody and a completely different mm-hmm. arrangement. Oh. oh, here's Lady Cab Driver. Or he just completely reinvents the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> yeah, like don't stand. Here's Lady Cab Driver. So it's- close to me. It's the, it's the only ripoff I can think of of a Prince song that's better is uh, uh, Oh Sheila. Like, that was a ripoff of this song. Well, in fairness, both. I'm still convinced that he did. But I've never found... I can't find any kind of documentation that he did. I didn't make that up, did I? He definitely wrote that song. No, he... That, that was... Late, I can't uh, even hear it. Uh, brain fart. Oh, Sheila was ready for the world. It was a this this mini right, that little vocal band. group. Yeah, and I've oh I've looked it up a few times. Prince had nothing. He wasn't a shadow writer on it or anything. They just ripped this off. I but don't know. I, they still don't really 
But I think Lady Cab Driver... They still don't credit Prince with the couple things he did with Ani. He's uncredited but, but at, on but at this But at this point, like, all of his, like, alter egos have come, like, is yeah. documented at this point. So unless he was just... Unless he, like, sent them a random letter, like... Here, listen, yeah. listen to this demo tape and write. <laughs> what? Wait, what was that alter ego, Chris Stapleton Gaines. or Stal- something? Stalin. <laughs> it's not Chris Gaines. <laughs> it was that Chris that Gaines. one guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's another one. Okay. So, <laughs> if any other people from Prince that like listen guy? to this, there's plenty of them. <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get crucified by the people at Prince.org, but sorry. Uh, Ready for the world. Oh, Sheila is better than this. Uh-oh. That's fighting words. Are you really sure hey, you're ready for the, oh, the kind of internet trolling you can hey, end up this, this was the prototype. They finished the song. We're at the f***ing part of the song. Oh, I'm sorry. Brett likes the talk over. This is, this is where the song really comes to life. Is where he's you f***ing the lady cab driver and is talking about why yeah. each of his f***ings is for... This is for the politicians. My favorite is this is for this is for the tourists at Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to somehow I'll, incorporate I'll, that I'll, into I'll my re- sex I'll life rewind now. it once. This I is for the tourists at Disneyland. Yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> One more time. Wow. <laughs> Boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> That's for me. That's who that's for. I think he says something about Jesus in here. How do you f***ing in a cab? It could be done. I just imagine it through, like, the slot. <laughs> I'm trying to picture how that would be done. Uh, there's not enough roof space, so, like, you both have to be upside down. <laughs> what am I picturing? I do not know what your hands are doing right now. Like, <laughs> like here's the no, leg. I was just thinking, um, here's the leg. Well, Chris, let me yeah, say, the, uh, she yeah. always figured out a way when she wanted to get laid. <laughs> 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 I'm like, well, it's happening. Okay. Oh, well, this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness that never happens anymore. My favorite song, yeah. Prince. Thank God. TMI. How would I ever get the dusting done? <laughs> my favorite pol- police song, Too Much Information. <laughs> Running through my brain. It is a walking on the moon. Ding. Fucking Ding. on the moon. Well, that is what Prince has on his mind. Ding. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, this is Ding. all apropos because... Oh. What episode number are we on? 69. That's right, people. The and dirtiest number there is. Apparently so. I think Unless this is 71, because that's with two fingers. I, th- <laughs> I think that was Prince. Prince's biggest shortcoming was he never went to outer space. <laughs> that was his shortcoming? <laughs> <laughs> no, he should have done, like, like, I don't know, like, Ground controlled his own version of ground controlled a major He's space odyssey. He's shredding on the guitar right now. I think it was the only guitar do, solo do. in this album. Do, do. That's like a Prince signature right there. It was weird because like do, do. I'm still old enough to remember when like too really? too many people didn't think of Prince as a great guitarist. Did they just because he buried it all the time? Yeah, like it was mostly live and like yeah, because there wasn't a lot on albums. And, like, live, it was always kind of intermittent. So, like, he wasn't showcasing guitar solos on albums. Sorry. And, like... Most of the time on the album work, he's just fingering it a little bit. It's very skillful. (laughs) It's all very skillful. (laughs) Yeah, I think think the problem with... Not a problem. It's one of the things I love. Is like, it was just intermittent shredding. It was, like, here's a specific place, and I'm going to... And shred here. We well, he didn't want to def- want it yeah. to define him. I mean, he's not Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen right. has one thing he does: he fucking shreds. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And Prince was like, "Yeah, I could do that." And bitch, get out my way because I'm gonna do all this other shit too. I'm gonna write songs that blow your mind. I'm gonna write riffs that blow your mind. I'm gonna write drum yeah. bits that blow your mind and lyrics that blow your mind. And I'm just gonna get you all laid. 
And, you know, because I'm Prince, bitch. And I, but I, don't, I don't even think it was that conscious. I, th- I think the, the music was just so varied that there, there was, he was just doing it where there was space for it. So mm-hmm. He didn't need that to be his thing. He had yeah. all the things. What do you say about masturbating? I didn't catch he it. He loves anything. masturbating. Oh, Clearly. Was this, is this the airplane thing? Like, ladies and stewardesses, and everyone. Oh, wait. What's the one where he's like, get, get in the lock position? Oh, that's the next song. <laughs> so he, there's lady cab driver. He f***s in a cab. And there's, then he f***s on an airplane. So he f***s in the cab. Then he's in New York. And then he f***s on an airplane going back to, uh, I don't know. What was the first song? 1999 mm-hmm. Land. Back to Man, the Apocalypse. Like Oh, yeah, boy. Crap, that okay. song goes on forever. This sure does. Song is still the all the critics love you in New York. Here's international lover. I'm still lover. kind of enjoying it in that vague background kind of a way. Here's, it's perfect for talking over albums. It was yeah. funny how he started talking over it. Yeah, this this, 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 this is like the most stock Prince song. Like it's still good and memorable, but it's like stock classic Prince. Yeah, it would have been just, great on somebody else's album. On a Prince album, she was like, "Jesus, dude, come on!" <laughs> it, it, it's it's. Where's the rest of it? It's just Prince sex ballad one hundred and one. Yeah, th- I'm just saying he got more complicated later. Come on. Yeah, th- this was this was definitely the template for like a hundred other Prince songs. <laughs> Bat dance. Put your hips and lips in lock position. <laughs> Bat dance. And hey, this is the first time we have a soundtrack to landing the plane. All right. All right. I'm giving it a 69 out of 89. That's my rating. I thought of that while I was on the toilet. <laughs> a 69 out of 89. That might not be good enough because I love this album. I'm giving so, this a 69 out of 69, baby. I'll give it a 69 and a 79. I'm particularly digging this song, actually. <laughs> This is where Prince is joining the Mile High Club. Oh my. He's I think that's the highest note he ever hit. That is that in was his impressive. entire career. That was like that an ungodly so piercing <laughs> note. He almost gets to Mariah Carey territory yeah. there. The whistle. The elusive magical Mariah Carey What's whistle. The drama of this. I can't understand the words because he's like cutting him up and they're too they're well at the end it makes high, it clear it he's, he's doing the pilot thing where he's like ladies and gentlemen get your get your private parts in lack position we're coming in for a landing for me it's a totally consistent album the only song on here I don't care for is free and it's still a good song yeah, I've already forgotten but, that song. But for me, it feels like a weird dip. Like it's just kind. Of, it's a it's kind of a sappy ballad. So it's the, it's the only like dip in this album Second for me. Second half of this album is entirely intended for you to be having sex too. Yeah, right. I didn't realize yeah. that. You know, when I was a child and this so, came out. So this would have been. This First five songs are like you're dancing. So at least on vinyl, this would have been a double album. So mm-hmm. like side one would have the first disc is the party album. Mm-hmm. And then the rest is... The rest of these, it is like putting on Sade while you go right. you know, hang out with your lady so friend. That's kind of weird to think about of like like a single album having specific discs of like, here's the party disc Hot of side, this album. Side. Yeah, yeah. And I, here I thought Wham came up with it. Prince, we love you. I hope you come back to life after Jesus comes and he's first to be resurrected in his holy kingdom. He'll be resurrected and he will have He's, so many great new songs. That's going to be fing awesome. What did Jason rate this? He didn't. Jason, come back here and rate this album. I already did. I didn't catch it. We'll assume you did. I what? said I agreed with the 16 out of 89. Okay. Bones. All right. I said 69 out of 89 bones. Anyway, thanks for listening, I guess. Me. Yeah. Hi, me. <laughs> hey, how you... Uh, I'm guessing this will be right. Sunday or Monday when you start editing this. How you doing, Brett? <laughs> Here's a message to yourself. <laughs> uh, I, anyway, I hope Prince this is... Fun. I hope Prince is 69ing St. Peter. St. Peter in heaven. 
Prince and Aretha Franklin are going to make beautiful, beautiful heavenly babies. Star babies. Here it is. Welcome to Satisfaction. We ended just on time. There we go. Thank you. It's flying Prince Airlines. Oh, dear God, that's bad. Well, I f***ed in a cab. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to do it on an airplane. Thanks, Prince. Thank... Shut up! <laughs> Thank God he never did a song about doing it on the space shuttle. Mm -hmm. it. It's like zero G grab. I, I think probably more never room mind. there than the cab. I take it back. I'm glad he never did anything in space. Like I'm doing it on the moon. Zero gravity funk. I'm f***ing in, in space. He's just fingering it a little bit. He's just fingering it a little bit. He's just fingering it a little bit. He's just fingering it a little bit.